Jane and I came to each other on a secular basis, you know, her family and my family, different backgrounds. When Michael and I decided to get married, we talked about the possibility of my converting. And he said, absolutely not. I like you just the way you are. We have had a, a generally secular life together. But uh, there was a turning point. In 1997, Michael's father and then Jane's mother died within days of one another. <laughs> when we went to uh, the service for Michael's dad, it was already we were beginning. It was going to be for both of them. We knew it was just a matter of days. In 1945, my father was a social worker. He was hired by the American Jewish Joint Distribution Committee to go to Europe. He was a part of the many people who were bringing people out of the camps. People said that my father, Jim Rice, settled 500,000 people. Michael's father went on to direct the Jewish Federation of Chicago and became a national leader on behalf of Holocaust survivors and the broader Jewish community. When Michael spoke at his father's funeral, he recalled. Being in the emergency room at St. Luke's Hospital, and the nurse, you know, saying, listen to the sponsor. He did have a heart. We learned what grief was in our lives and had no religious recourse at all. We were there alone together, the two of us. I felt I needed some kind of community to help me through this. When Jane and Michael started volunteering with us, they were looking for a way to connect with community. And the truth is, we need thousands of people like them to do the work that we do. The Chicken Soup Organization feeds people with AIDS and critically ill people in their homes. Everyone that works under Jane and Michael loves them both. It's uh, they have a set of great examples for the, the kids that come in. It puts you in contact with other, uh, other lives, other circumstances, and it's, it's, a, it's a great form of connection. Michael and Jane have chosen to do this volunteer work together. They love the idea of sharing this experience, and I I know that for the people who they visit, to have two people come like it's a friendly visit. You know, you ring the bell and you've got the box or the bag and, you know, they, they you can just, they say thank you and, you know, that's uh, all you need. One Chicken Super Sunday, um, when we were given the cards, there was a new client, Janet. I took in the box of food and they invited me in and an hour later we're still talking. She was about to begin chemo. As she was able to feel better, we, Michael and me, and Nick and Janet as a couple, we started doing more and more together. She joined Chicken Supers. She Nick, and Nick. Nick joined Chicken Supers, and we were all at it together. And those were really fun times. Sadly, um, uh, Janet's condition came back. I knew then that I was going to ride it with her to the end, you know, because um, you don't abandon a friend. After Jane retired from directing an English language program, she increased her volunteer work for JFCS, getting involved in disabilities and Holocaust programs. Working with Holocaust survivors, it was to honor Michael's father, their history, his history. These are really great things for us, especially Holocaust survivors. You come visiting your family. Yes. And this is our family because everybody's in the same yes. boat. They, they're proud. They're proud and they're strong. And, you know, what's not to like about them? As soon as I <laughs> did my first Lunch and Learn, I was hooked. She is very, very dedicated. She tries very hard to be very personal with everyone. More power to her. Less than a third of survivors in the U.S. have recorded their testimonies. Partnering with Israel's Yad Vashem Holocaust Museum, JFCS spearheaded the national effort to record the names of those who perished before it's too late. And Jane made it possible for Hedy Van Wy to do so. I met Jane 
at the Jewish family and children's building. And she already saw this picture of my mother's family when I was a child. Most of them never came back from Auschwitz. I immediately drew a diagram of the photograph to identify each who was standing where, and then very methodically and slowly we walked person to person to person, uh, taking down the information that I then put into the page of testimony for her. We got to Auschwitz. My mother lied that I'm 17 years old because I was a big girl. She saved my life. But my little brother went to the other side and never saw him again. To think about it on my own is very painful. Jane, she's a very special lady. She understood that it's hard for me to talk about this, all this, and she helped me. As we began volunteering with JFCS, we learned there's a community out there not only of volunteers, but if you volunteer, you are given so much more than what you give. You can't even talk about balance. It's what they give us. We were so sustained, having fun with the seniors, meeting new people, having fun at Chicken Supers. JFCS gave us our life back. This will be the best chicken soup anybody's ever had. <laughs>